Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the Never Do Through the Wii what you can do through the CLI channel. I am Vangelis and today we will be exploring Web API benchmarking, optimizing Warp Tokyo to match tight async STD. It will be a little long as a video because we have tested a lot of things. The final result will be available in the description and when I say we have to test a lot of things, I saw that all these uh, different setups uh, produce different results, so we will exp explore them together. If you don't want to see the whole video, you can just check the description of the video, or you can fast forward the video, you can do whatever you want, but there will be uh, quite a few enough information in the video. Uh, but before we start, uh, I want to uh, give you an update. Uh, the last video we talked about the Actix Web uh, framework and this API, this Actix Web Web Block API, which was using its own uh, thread pool and the corresponding crate, the thread thread pool crate. But for the latest version, the version four. Uh, this has been changed and Actix Web is taking advantage of Tokyo run, of the Tokyo runtime. So if we check the source code for this, we will see that it uses the Actix RT, Actix RT to task spawn blocking. And if we check this crate, we will see that it has this runtime and this runtime in essence is a Tokyo runtime. So what we said about Actix Web utilizing a separate thread pool is not valid for the latest version for version 4. This was uh, pointed out to me by Rob, the main maintainer of uh, Actix Web, and we thank him, thank him for this uh, information. So this is a, a good thing, of course. Uh, my initial benchmark, though, did not uh, uh, show that Actix Web, the latest Actix Web, outperforms tied, uh, but I may have to revisit the subject and retest and see if I can uh, do something better with that. But uh, this is the information regarding Actix Web for this video. And we will get into our actual video, which is trying to optimize Warp. And uh, we will start with this configuration. Uh, the first configuration uh, is the Tokyo non-Tokyo ta task spawn blocking, the map handler, and the logical CPU core. So I will explain everything. Here we are not using this uh, API yet. We have the our usual implementation, which is this. We just get the users, and we don't uh, get them in a different thread. And we use the map uh, API here, if you, as you can see here, in order to build our route. This is what I mean by the map here. And we are using the logical CPU cores here, as you can see for our runtime. So this is the first setup. And we are what we are trying to match is uh, the output of Tide, which is this one. This amount of requests and all this stuff. So I, I will have it in the description. I have it here already with the CPU utilization and the memory that it needed. And we will get all this information for warp two. So let's start. This is our command. Let's come here and let's say cargo run release, but not in uppercase cargo run release and we will start branching and we will get this too so start and let's see what we get here <coughs> memory 46 uh, sorry cpu 47 memory 33 so 50 33 50 33 let's say Forty eight is the greatest that we saw regarding the CPU. So let's go for forty eight and thirty. Let me get this copy. 
and <clears throat> so 48 and 30 okay this is done let's go for the physical cpu course so what we will do is we will come here and we will say that we want the physical cpu course we will rerun this and we will rebench let's see what we get forty nine is the best memory twenty seven forty nine twenty seven forty nine twenty seven Okay, let's get this copy. So forty nine twenty seven, forty nine twenty seven. Let's make a quick test here. Uh, you see that this setup with the physical CPU cores here outperforms the logical CPU cores okay that's a nice one so we are done with the case with non Tokyo task spawn blocking so we will now uh, get into this API we will use this because our operation of getting the users is CPU bound so it is uh, advisable to do it in another thread so we will use this spawn blocking api and we will use this uh, also this um, configuration and i will explain so first of all what we have to do is kill this and change our branch to tokyo spawn blocking so git check out tokyo okay so let's check the code And we will start with which one? The then handler. So we want Tokyo sp spawn blocking and the then handler. This is our then handler, as you can see. So we build our runtime with how many? Uh, with the logical CPU cores. Okay, logical CPU cores. We use the then handler. Then handler. And we use the spawn blocking. So, uh, then handler, this is the function that we use. And as you can see, we spawn a new thread here. Let me bring it here. With uh, spawn a new thread, we calculate our users and then we return. Uh, a reply which implements the word reply trait so we we return our json this is our setup so let's try to run this and see what we get so cargo run release And let's see what we will get. <clears throat> CPU 63, memory 286. 63, 67, 69, 300, 69, 300, the best we saw. 69 let's say 69 300 was the best we saw so 69 300 and we also get this result 
Cop. So as you can see here, we have a great degradation in the output uh, compared to this one. This was our best so far, our best setup, as you can see. And we have uh, this setup is worse. Even though we are using spawn blocking, the final result is worse, as you can see. So let's go to our next one, which is the same. Spawn blocking, then handler and physical CPU cores. So let's come here and we will say that we want the physical CPU cores. We will kill this, we will rerun, re we will rebench and we will come here. Let's see here what happens. Sixty three to fourteen. Sixty three to twenty. Sixty five to fifteen. Sixty five to thirty. Sixty three to thirty. Sixty five to twenty. So let's say sixty five to thirty is the, our best our, not best, our peaks, 65, 65, 230, and let's check the result, copy, Now, here another very interesting um, observation. Look at how the numbers have degraded. This is uh, outrageous how the numbers have gone down, as you can see. So we have uh, 72,000 requests, uh, requests per second, 2,300, 400, let's say compared to our best result to the previous let's go to the previous setup so you see how much difference this simple change uh, has the logical vs the physical cpu cores everything else is the same but just check the difference in the output here this is amazing. Okay, our next uh, setup is and then handler and the logical CPU cores. So let's come here and we want the logical CPU cores and we want the and then handler. Logical CPU cores and then handler, as you can see. And this and then handler uses a different function. Uh, the result, the difference is that this function re uh, returns a result with a reply and the infallible, whereas the previous function was uh, returning only this implement word reply. So let's make sure that we are correct, uh, logical and then. blocking and then and logical okay so let's rerun and let's repent <coughs> 68 to 80 68 to 80 to 70, let's say, to 80, 67 to 80, 67, 68 to 
80. Let's say 68 to 80. Eight to eighty, and let's get the result. Copy. <clears throat> what can we see here? We see again a, a huge rise, as you can see from the previous setup. And the numbers are about the same as the other setups with the difference of this one, which is the best setup right now, as you can see. Okay, and our last is this the same uh, with physical CPU cores. So let's come here. Let's enable this. And let's kill this. Let's rerun. And let's rebench. Okay, uh, we did not check our uh, memory usage. Let's, sorry about that, let's retest. Sixty-two to eighty. Sixty-two. 282, 288, 290, 62, 291, 62, 290, I think it's a good place for us, 62, 290, 62, 290, and let's get these two copy and what do we have we have fifty five 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 six thousand as you can see request per second eighteen point five thousand so this is this seems better this is the worst setup as you can see a huge degradation in perform in performance uh, 17.8 so this is worse this is worse and this is our best result as you can see this is our best result so, <clears throat> um, the, um, what are the conclusions? As I said, I will have all this information in the description of the video. And the conclusion is, first of all, that uh, none of these setups manage to match the performance of Async SD and Tide. This is a first result. And the second result is that, uh, as you can see, uh, the performance of your framework may greatly fluctuate. So the best bet is to perform some benchmarks regarding your configuration uh, in order to be, to be sure that you are taking the full advantage, full advantage of what the framework can provide you. So, as we saw, even though 
it is advisable to use the spawn blocking API because our operation in our benchmarks is CPU bound. At least for these runs of the benchmarks, we saw that uh, not using the spawn blocking API was better, had a better performance compared to using the spawn blocking API. As you can see, at least for these runs, none of the spawn blocking uh, setups uh, performed better than this setup. Of course, uh, the benchmarks may fluctuate. Uh, you have to perform a number of benchmarks, so don't rely only on one benchmark, but run every setup uh, with various, um, various iterations, a lot of iterations, in order for you to get some mean numbers and be sure about what the setup is, the correct setup. But uh, the, the point to take away is that, uh, as you can see regarding the setups, your output may uh, take a great hit, like in this situation, where we have a huge impact on the warp uh, throughput, as you can see. And the last uh, point that I would like to make is um, what do we make of the difference between Tokyo and Async STD? At least, as you can see here, trying to optimize warp, we did not manage to meet the performance of Async STD and Tide. Uh, even though that we, I think at least that we have a correct setup and we try both the blocking API and the non-blocking API. So does that mean that uh, Async STD is a better implementation? Tide is a better implementation? I don't know. I really don't know. But the takeaway is for sure uh, benchmark your setup in order, in order to get the, the best possible performance out of what you have chosen, out of the framework that you have chosen for your services. So this was this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.